So welcome back. So we're in the process of proving the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, and to do this, we've defined this quadratic function in U, and we've concluded that this quadratic function must always be greater than or equal to zero at all points in the real line. Now, some theory about quadratic functions that you will have seen before, but we just need to do it formally because this is now analysis. So if you've got a quadratic function au squared plus bu plus c, where a, b, and c are the coefficients in front of the degree 2, degree 1, and degree 0 term, respectively, and you know that this quadratic function is greater than or equal to 0 everywhere for all u, then you can conclude that the discriminant of the quadratic, so b squared minus 4ac, must be less than or equal to zero. And I want to explain exactly rigorously why you're able to conclude that. And then we'll use that about this uh, quadratic function here, and that will then give us the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality when we use the coefficients that we've got here for our a, b, and c. So I'm going to prove that you're able to conclude that the discriminant must be less than or equal to zero by contradiction. So for contradiction, for the sake of contradiction, we'll assume the opposite is true, that b squared minus 4ac is greater than zero. And I will show that that then contradicts this being true. So I'm going to show that I can find you a u such that au squared plus bu plus c is equal to n, where n is some negative number. So I've just used n uh, for negative. It's got nothing to do with the n that I've been talking about previously for n tuples, the number of dimensions that we're working in. Uh, this is some other real number that is negative, and I've just used n because it's the first letter of negative. So we're now just going to complete the square. So the first thing we do is divide through by a. We're assuming a doesn't equal 0. After all, the function isn't a quadratic function if a does equal 0. It's a linear function. And we know, of course, about r function up here that the uh, leading coefficient in front of u squared is not equal to zero. So dividing through by a we get u squared plus b over a times u plus c over a is equal to our negative number over a. So then you can rewrite this as u plus b over 2a squared and then if you square this out you'll get the u squared back again. The cross term you'll get will be b over a times u and then you'll also get this times itself, which is b squared over 4a squared. So you need to now subtract that off. So you'll get plus c over a minus b squared over 4a squared is equal to n over a. So this is exactly equivalent to this equation here. This is a perfectly valid algebraic manipulation. Next, what I'm going to do is bring this thing onto this side. So we'll bring this one onto this side, so it will become plus b squared over 4a squared, and then we bring this onto this side, it becomes minus c over a, and then we can get them over the same denominator by multiplying top and bottom by 4a, so this becomes b squared minus 4ac over 4a squared. Now we use our assumption that the discriminant b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, that means the numerator here is going to be greater than 0. a is non-zero, you've then squared it, you'll get something, therefore, that's positive. Times it by 4, you'll still have something that's positive. So you've got something that's greater than 0, something that's positive, divided by something that's positive. Therefore, this fraction will overall end up greater than 0 as well, a positive value. Now, if this side, the right-hand side here, overall ends up being greater than or equal to 0, then we will be able to find a real number that squares to make that. Whenever you've got a non-negative real number, there is always a square root in the real line. So we'll be able to take the square root of that, plus or minus its square root. Both of those will square to give this value as long as it's greater than or equal to zero. And then there will exist a u that satisfies the equation, because if you just take u is equal to plus or minus the square root, and then all we need to do is subtract off this, so minus b over 2a. So we'll be able to find solutions to this equation equation provided that this right hand side is overall non-negative greater than or equal to zero. So I know this bit here is greater than zero so I just now need to have a look at this bit so n is negative now it might be the case that a was negative as well and therefore this has overall become positive but if we consider the other case where a was positive then this is still negative so you've got something that's positive being added to something that's negative, as long as I make that thing that's negative here, though, smaller, small enough that 
n over a does not win over this term and turn the whole thing negative. As long as I make the modulus of n over a smaller than the modulus of this, I can then be assured that this will be greater than zero. So what I've shown here is that as long as I make my choice of n, this negative number, a small enough modulus negative number, I can ensure that this thing will always end up greater than or equal to zero, and then there will be a solution to this equation. There will be a u in the real line such that it satisfies this equation, that a times u squared plus bu plus c is equal to this small negative number. And that then contradicts the fact that the quadratic function is always greater than or equal to zero, because I have found you a u-value where it's equal to a negative number. So that proves that it cannot be the case that b squared minus 4ac, the discriminant, is greater than zero, and therefore not this is true. So b squared minus 4ac is therefore less than or equal to zero. So let's now apply this fact to our quadratic function here. So this is our a, this is our b, and this is our c. Let's put them into here, and we'll get the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So doing this then, so we take b here and square it, pull the 2 out. When you square 2, you get 4, and then the rest of it squared is the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi yi squared. And then we've got minus 4 times a, which is sum from i is equal to 1 to n of xi squared and then times c, which is the sum from i is equal to 1 to n of yi squared, and that's less than or equal to 0. So now all we do is cancel the 4 and, um, by, well, multiply through by a quarter, and which is a positive number, so we don't need to change the sign of the inequality, and then just take this onto the other side, and we get that this is less than or equal to this, which is the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality. So instead of writing it out again, I've just brought this thing up here next to where we've already written out the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality and you can see yes that if you multiply through by a quarter those go and then you bring this over to the other side you've then just got this which is here is less than or equal to this thing which is what you've got here and with that we will finish this video thank you for watching